A patient presented with neurological complications after a difficult extraction of the mandibular third molar. The patient developed loss of general sense and taste sensation from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. Injury of which of the following nerves is most likely responsible for this loss? First, we need to remember the nerve supply of the tongue. All the muscles of the tongue are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve, except palatoglossus, which can be considered as a muscle of the palate, as the beginning of its name indicates, palato. Regarding the sensory innervation of the tongue, this relates to the anatomical and embryological development of the tongue and its division into anterior two-thirds and a posterior one-third. The anterior two-thirds of the tongue that develop from the first branchial arch is supplied by a branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, and this is the lingual nerve, for general sensation. This is supplemented by a branch of the nerve of the third branchial arch, the facial nerve, in the form of corda tympani. The corda tympani will join the lingual nerve in the infratemporal fossa, and the fibers that are carried by the corda tympani are involved in the taste sensation from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. The posterior third of the tongue develops from the third branchial arch and is therefore supplied by the nerve of the third arch, the glossopharyngeal nerve, both for general and taste sensation. In addition to that, the internal laryngeal branch of the vagus nerve, the tenth cranial nerve, also supplies a small area of the mucosa of the tongue just anterior to the epiglottis. The second point we need to remember is about the branches of the mandibular nerve in the infratemporal fossa. This is a dissection of the infratemporal fossa and uh, the main nerve here is the mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve has anterior and posterior divisions. We are more concerned about the posterior division of the mandibular nerve that gives the auriculotemporal nerve that goes posteriorly and also it gives the inferior alveolar nerve and anterior to it is the lingual nerve. Actually, surgical removal of the lower third molar uh, endangers both the lingual and the inferior alveolar nerves. The inferior alveolar nerve, as you can see it here, passes behind the lingual nerve and then it enters the mandibular foramen. Uh, this is the mandibular foramen in here and the inferior alveolar nerve passes through the mandibular foramen. Before doing so, it gives a small tiny branch that doesn't pass into the mandibular canal, but outside the canal and below the mouth. And this is the nerve of the mylohyoid and anterior belly of digastric. After that, the inferior alveolar nerve passes through the mandibular canal. I'm drawing it interrupted here because it is inside the bone and it supplies the mandibular teeth. And then it gives a mental branch that arises from the mental foramen to supply the skin of the chin, mucous membrane of the lower lip and the outer surface of the gum. So now returning to the inferior alveolar nerve within the mandibular canal, at this situation it is close to the root of the third molar. Hence, it might be injured during removal of an impacted third molar. Now, returning back to the choices here, the hypoglossal nerve is wrong because the hypoglossal is the motor innervation of the tongue. It is not related to sensation. The inferior alveolar nerve, it doesn't supply the tongue. It supplies the teeth. Yes, it might be injured in cases of an impacted third molar uh, tooth because it is close to the root of the third molar, uh, but the consequences and the neurological damage is different as has been described in its distribution. Now let's go to the third option, the lingual nerve. The lingual nerve, as it branches from the posterior division of the mandibular nerve, runs forward to the inferior alveolar nerve and downward and so it comes into direct contact with the mandible. It comes because it passes in front of the inferior alveolar nerve and becomes in direct contact with the mandible as it enters into the mouth. This place 
here is just behind the third molar tooth. So it comes into direct contact with the mandible behind the third molar tooth. And for this reason, it can be also injured in cases of a difficult extraction of a third molar tooth. We can see it here just beneath the mucosa of the mouth over the sublingual salivary gland. And the lingual nerve supplies ordinary sensation, general sensation to the anterior two thirds of the tongue. Also, uh, it supplies the lingual surface of the anterior part of the gum. Now, associated with the lingual nerve is the corda tympani. So the corda tympani here, it just joins the lingual nerve at this point. And actually, it leaves the facial nerve in the deep in the petrous part of the temporal bone and then emerges at the base of the skull from a tiny fissure, which is called the petrotympanic fissure, finds itself in the infratemporal fossa and immediately joins the lingual nerve. It carries two types of fibers. It carries scretomotor fibers that are going to be distributed to the sublingual and submandibular gland through the lingual nerve. And also it carries taste fibers from the anterior two thirds of the tongue. These fibers originally, they are carried by the lingual nerve. And then these fibers will join the corda tympani and reach through the corda tympani and the facial nerve. They will reach the brain. The remaining part of the lingual nerve will carry the general sensation from the anterior two thirds of the tongue. So if the lingual nerve is injured at this position, as it enters the mouth behind the third molar tooth, then uh, the injury here might affect both the general sensation fibers and the taste fibers, which belong to the corda tympani. So the option C is correct because the lingual nerve, it supplies general sensation to the anterior two thirds of the tongue, as well as taste fibers that are carried by it from the corda tympani. And for the second reason is that it is liable to injury because of its position close to the third molar tooth. The corda tympani is wrong because the corda tympani, if it is injured, then this will affect only the taste fibers from the, uh, or the taste sensation from the anterior two thirds of the tongue. And as you can see here, that the corda tympani is away from the site of injury. The glossopharyngeal nerve, the choice is wrong because the glossopharyngeal nerve actually is located in the pharynx. It supplies the posterior third of the tongue with taste and uh, general sensory fibers, but this is not the anterior two thirds of the tongue. This is the posterior third of the tongue. The glossopharyngeal nerve is located close to the oropharynx, might be injured in cases of tonsillectomy, and is away from the site of injury that might result from an extraction of the third molar tooth. So the correct answer here is the lingual nerve.